All right, Jeff Zerlin, co-founder of Axie Infinity, thanks for joining us. Yeah, thanks for inviting me. So let's talk about Axie. I mean, it's gotten so big so quickly. Uh, crypto for some people is still hard enough as it is to understand, but then you try to explain the world of Axie Infinity. I mean, what's the basic 101 you would say to a layperson who says, well, well what is Axie Infinity? It's a digital pet game where you can battle and collect and breed these cute, adorable pets. Um, like the one that's on your shirt. Yeah, uh, I guess the, the new aspect is that it has a player-owned economy, so you can actually earn tokens by playing the game that have real world value. I've heard a little bit about Decentraland. Is that a similar type thing? Uh, Decentraland is, I guess, more of like an open kind of universe or something. Um, whereas, right, so the, the idea with Axie, right, is that there are these <laughs> digital pets and we're building, constantly building new experiences, right? So when the game first launched, right, Axies, each Axie was actually only six words that described what it looked like, right? And then we launched the art. And then we added a marketplace so you can tra tra uh, trade them. Then we added uh, auto battles, right? It's kind of like an automated battle system. But then we decided that we wanted to upgrade that and make it a real-time battle system. So we upgraded the battle system. Uh, we added tokenized resources. We added governance tokens. So over the last three and a half years, well, we, we've been making it like much, you know, steadily uh, more engaging, interesting, um, add it by adding more features. And you know, it's, it's been an layers. iterative process. Yeah, a lot of layers in that ecosystem. You know, it's hard for me not to think of some um, games that came before. And I'm just curious if any of those were influences for you or predecessors. I mean, there's Pokemon, there's, I remember on Nintendo GameCube, there was Pikmin. Animal Crossing got very big early in the pandemic. That's a whole world. But even dating years ago, you know, I think of Second Life, The Sims, mm. SimCity. Sure. I mean, those were, you know, universes too that existed, gaming universes, where there were forms of in-game currency or add-ons. How much did those influence the play-to-earn and NFT gaming space as we now look at it? Sure, so I think with Axie, our goal is to introduce the world to something that can, to, to something that can be a bit ex complicated and, and exciting, blockchain, through something that's right, fun and relatable and nostalgic, right? So this nostalgia, right, Axie, in terms of the gameplay, it's, similar to games that we grew up playing, like Pokemon or uh, maybe Tamagotchi. Um, is, some people think it's reminiscent of Neopets, mm. uh, right? But then, yeah, in terms of right, this, real wor this real money economy that we've added on top, um, there are some predecessors, right? Like EVE Online has this uh, pretty, you know, it's pretty interesting in-game economy. Uh, Neopets, right, actually had this huge secondary market for, for you know, buying cosmetics and things like that. So the, I think, Blockchain just makes it a lot easier, and right. So it's kind of turning these gray markets or black markets into something that's not just supported and made much easier, but it's something that the game developers are actually actively trying to uh, grow, right? So yeah. because the money uh, is so big, and because the value has gone up for these NFTs, are you finding that you know even though the actual thing we're talking about is a game and a world in which you can interact and you can play the game, there are also people getting into Axie just for speculation. Are there people who are getting in, they get the Axie NFTs, they're not really playing the game? Definitely. So I think there are around 15 different uh, player archetypes within our ecosystem, right? So there are people who are just collecting Axies, there are people who are really into the PvP battles uh, and are intense about like climbing the leaderboard, there are people who are just mainly here to farm uh, different uh, tokens by playing the game, right? These are scholars. Uh, but they also, I think, have, have a lot of fun. There are people who just trade the, the NFTs. There are people who just buy and hold the NFTs. There are people who just buy and hold the governance token or trade the governance token or trade uh, SLP. There are people who, are, they don't actually even like the game, but they like making Axie content, so they'll make art. Um, and they'll, uh, there are people who do educational tutorials and, and make YouTube content and stream. Right? So there are all these different archetypes within our ecosystem. I think the beauty of it right, is that there are so many different ways to engage with Axie and that there's basically some something for everyone. I feel like as a non-technical person, I was not I was not I'm not an engineer. So mm. for years I never got interested in crypto because it seemed like something that you needed to know how to code or needed to learn how to set up a miner. So it just seemed like it, it was kind of unfair. Right? It's like why do they get to like mine it through a, a computer program but I have to buy it from them? So it seems kind of like unfair as a non-technical person, but when I found out about NFTs, right? As as someone who's a lifelong gamer collector, it just it made sense to me. Like this was something where I could use my own skill set to contribute and find my own place within the ecosystem. And I think that's part of the magic of Axie.
Yeah, all that is really appealing. I mean, you've got me ready to play and ready to try it out. What's next for you guys, either for Axie Infinity in terms of add-ons to that ecosystem or things that you want to do with it? Or are you already starting to think about, you know, what do I launch or build next separate from Axie? Sure. So we have a long road ahead. Axie is only maybe 6% completed. Uh, so right now we need to upgrade our battle system. So we're, we're looking to do that within the next six months, basically this big launch of a, a new battle system with upgraded art, animations, a, a new kind of system for playing the cards that you battle with. Uh, so we're working on that. We also have a DEX on the way, which I think our community is super excited about. Uh, we, yeah, we're also working on land, Axie land. So this is kind of an alt, a, diff, a whole new game mode, right? So something maybe similar to Clash of Clans mm. or maybe Animal Crossing, right? Where you're harvesting resources, building up a town or a village, uh, fighting for control of territory. Uh, but then we also have this other layer where, where you might even be able to build games on top of that land, right? So I think long term, so the long term vision, I think is, right, Axie, we want Axie to be the first game that's owned and operated by the community that plays it. So long term, it's going to be impossible for Sky Mavis, the inventors of Axie, uh, to make all the content that hundreds of millions of people want. So we also need to, it. right, like yeah, bring in this concept of UGC, uh, where uh, we basically are user generated content yeah. where anyone could potentially build a game on top of Axie using the art assets, right? There are so many game developers out there in the world that have really good ideas for games, but what do they lack? They lack uh, really strong IP. They lack a community that's interested in playing it. And so these are the things that Axie, I think, as a protocol can uh, provide to game developers long term. So I think it's going to be uh, yeah, kind of like this amazing uh, toolkit for the game developers to build on top of. So are we just all going to exist in the metaverse now? Like 10 years from now, that's it? You're just plugged in all the, all the time? <laughs> mm. Yeah, so a lot of people are talking about the metaverse recently. I think my, so my definition, I don't, I'm not sure, I, I, don't, I don't really have a strict one. I think that the metaverse won't necessarily look like we anticipate it to. I think like some of my uh, maybe prerequisites of the metaverse are, okay, it, it has, it's, it's, this, uh, it, it's a game world that has an effect on your real life. Um, and, and it's characterized by having like deep economic, social um, interactions with anyone anywhere in the world. Uh, as well as this, as this aspect of fun or culture. So that's the way that I'm looking at it right now. I think of Snow Crash, if you ever read it. Yeah. Uh, I actually haven't read it, um, but yeah. You'll like it. Uh, all right, Jeff Zerlin, thanks so much for joining us. Awesome, good stuff. Nice to meet you.